you said nations in relation to each other are is essentially in a state of anarchism. Yeah. Well, anarchy basically means the opposite of hierarchy. Sometimes people think when you're talking about anarchy, you're talking about murder and mayhem, mm -hmm. but that's not what anarchy means in the realist context. Mm -hmm. Anarchy simply means that you don't have hierarchy. There's no higher authority that sits above states. States are like pool balls on a table, right? And in an anarchic world, uh, there's no higher authority that you can turn to uh, if you get into trouble. And of course, the political philosopher who laid this all out was Thomas Hobbes. Mm -hmm. And Hobbes talked about life in the state of nature. And in the state of nature, you have individuals. And those individuals compete with each other for power. And the reason that they do is because in the state of nature, by definition, you have no higher authority. And Hobbes's view is that the way to get out of this terrible situation where individuals are competing with each other and even killing each other is to create a state. It's what he calls the Leviathan. And that, of course, is the title of his famous book. So the idea is to escape anarchy, you create a state. And that means you go from anarchy to hierarchy. The problem in international politics is that there is no world state. There is no hierarchy. And if you have no hierarchy and you're in an anarchic system, you have no choice but to try to maximize your relative power, to make sure you are, as we used to say when I was a kid on New York City playgrounds, the biggest and baddest dude on the block. Mm -hmm. Not because you necessarily want to beat up on other kids or on other states, but because again, that's the best way to survive. And as I like to point out to people, the best example of what happens when you're weak in international politics is what the Chinese call the century of national humiliation. Mm -hmm. uh, from the late 1840s to the late 1940s, the Chinese were remarkably weak and the great powers in the system preyed upon them. And uh, that sends a very important message to not only the Chinese, but to other states in the system. Don't be weak, be as powerful as you can. And we'll talk about it, but humiliation can lead to resentment and resentment leads to uh, something you've also studied, which is Nazi Germany in the 1930s. We'll talk about it. Um, but staying to the psychology and philosophy picture, What's the connection between the will to power in the individual, as you mentioned, and the will to power in a nation? The will to power in an individual has a lot to do with individual psychology. Uh, the story that I tell about the pursuit of power is a structural argument. It, mm -hmm. It's an argument that says when you are in a particular structure, when you're in a system that has a specific architecture, which is anarchy, the states have no choice but to compete for power. Mm -hmm. uh, so structure is really driving the story here. Will to power has a lot more to do with an individual uh, in, in the Nietzschean story where that concept comes from. So it's very important to understand that I'm not arguing that states are inherently aggressive, right? My point is that as long as states are in anarchy, right, they have no choice but to behave in an aggressive fashion. But if you went to a hierarchic system, uh, there's no reason for those states to worry about the balance of power because if they get into trouble, there is a higher authority that they can turn to. There is, in effect, a leviathan. 